starting to lose your memory by now? You, Murphy Brown, this th I'm Tony Waterman coming up on The Breakdown this week. Hot, hot, hot. We dive head first into insurance-linked securities. Billions of dollars are being raised, and Bermuda is at the center of it all. Plus, ignition. the race for space has gone commercial. We'll take a look at the role Bermuda can play in the $400 billion industry. That's Thursday at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. You can count on us. Snow White Cauliflower, only $3.99 each. Fresh assorted pork chops at $3.49 per pound. Freshly baked apple or pumpkin pies, hot price, $6.99 each. Scott Comfort Plus Bath Tissue, four rolls, only $3.49. Save a dollar on Vieira's Portuguese Rolls, hot price, $4.79. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. You're watching Bermuda tonight. It's Tuesday, November the 20th. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us. It's considered one of the major contributors to the high cost of doing business in this country, but Premier David Burt says government is moving to ensure that becomes a thing of the past, and the approach to reducing energy costs may not bode well for Belco. Gary Moreno tells us more. The fact that Bermuda's energy costs are among the highest in the region is not lost on Premier David Burt, and this was clearly stated in the 2018 throne speech. One way of providing some measure of relief, he suggests, may be to revisit the current energy tax structure. Everybody pays the same uh, rate, and maybe we want to do it in a more progressive model, where those people who consume less um, pay less, and those who consume more pay more in taxes. So there's different things in which we can do in that aspect. And while restructuring the energy tax system is still under consideration, Federation. One thing for certain is that Belco, the island's sole power distribution company, should not expect any breaks from government, even as it seeks to upgrade its facilities in a bid to provide cheaper and more efficient energy to meet the island's needs. We will not support rate increases from Belco to pay for their new plants. Belco has earned dividends on the backs of ratepayers for many years on end, and they should be reinvesting those particular dividends inside of their new plants and not putting it on the backs of the ratepayers who have been paying uh, their Belco rates uh, for a very long time. In any event, the Premier contends the approach being adopted by the Serpentine Road Company may not be in the country's best interest. Energy is changing. So the model that uh, certain companies may have, such as Belco, insofar as they want to sell more energy, is not the way of the future. And we have to recognize that. And that's why it's encouraging that there's been multiple submissions to the integrated resource plan. And we're going to look at those submissions and we're going to decide what is best for Bermuda's collective energy future. And this, the Premier asserts, is where the proposed integrated energy resource plan could prove valuable from both an economic and sustainability perspective which is talking about how we can use more uh, renewable energies and others to be a part of that energy mix and how that can lead to a reduction of costs in the future. We recognize the challenge that Bermuda has with some of the highest energy costs. We recognize that some of that comes from taxes, some of that also comes from an inefficient operation of which we have, and we're going to take whatever measures are necessary because, and I say this very clearly, Long term, we have to be able to reduce the amount of money which we pay in energy. And if we have a lower energy cost that is here, we will have higher economic growth going forward. A number of commentators, including elder statesman Sir John Swan, have come out in favor of the integrated energy resource approach in the form of the Bermuda Better Energy Plan, projecting use of 64% clean renewables of wind and solar power by the year 2038. This, as opposed to the Belco plan, which relies far more heavily on fossil fuels to generate electricity over the next 20 years, a measure seen as too costly and far less sustainable. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. 
The Bermuda Industrial Union and One Communications Management tonight have announced a resolution to the recent industrial action taken by the company's unionized staff members. In a joint statement, they say they've reached a, quote, amicable resolution to all matters. One Communications staff began returning to work Monday morning after 30 workers downed tools last Thursday over what they alleged to be misconduct carried out by one of the company's managers. Frank Amaral, on behalf of One Communications, thanked the union for their efforts in seeking a quick resolution to the matters raised. In a separate matter, the company parted ways with Michael Jones, a former contract worker, and they note that he intends to pursue an employment claim against One Communications. However, the telecommunications firm says it intends to fully defend its position on that claim. And we'll have more for you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. If you're looking for the cheapest, easiest way to bring your online shopping to Bermuda, choose U.S. Express at Mailboxes. I enjoy the service a lot. It's very fast. U.S. Express is always on time, and they always call you to come get your goods on time. The cashback when you get enough deliveries is really nice. It's an added bonus. When you shop online, always use your Mailboxes U.S. Express address in New Jersey to save money. You can count on us. Lil Cheap, Gallop, or Macintosh Apples, two-pound bag, just $3.99. Fresh Purdue chicken drumsticks, $1.99 per pound. Kraft mayonnaise, 30-ounce jar, special price, $5.59. Carnation evaporated milk, 410-gram tin, only $1.59. Sargento sliced cheeses, 6.7, 8-ounce packages, hot price, $3.99. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. From the very beginning, it was always our singular focus to do whatever it takes, use every possible resource to fight cancer, and never lose sight of the patients we're fighting for. Our cancer treatment specialists share the same vision. Experts from all over the world working closely together to deliver truly personalized cancer care. And these are the specialists we're proud to call our own. Expert medicine works here. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Appointments available now. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. The shadow finance minister Nick Kemp has backed the idea of new taxes in a bid to boost ailing government revenue. He's weighing in on following the submission last week of the final report of the Tax Reform Commission, which recommends sweeping new taxes. However, as our Tarai Trot tells us, the senator believes government must ultimately do the one thing that will help, but is seen as highly controversial. Rental income tax, general services tax, foreign currency tax, all just some of the new taxes proposed for government consideration by the Tax Reform Commission. If government follows all of the commission's recommendations, revenue to the Bermuda government would increase by nearly $150 million. An enormous debt was created, a government machine that was overspending. However, the shadow finance minister Nick Kemp warns that while he supports the new taxes, unless government addresses the immigration elephant in the room, Bermuda's economy, he says, will continue to struggle. We need to stimulate our economy. We need to grow the consumer base. The report very clearly stated that we need more warm bodies on this island spending money. Earning money from away as well, but spending money. And, and immigration is the problem here. We can talk about whatever else you want, but unless we stimulate this economy, the rest of it's just, just window dressing. Senator Kemp's opposition, One Bermuda Alliance, has criticized the government for failing to manage the economy, which it insists is once again in decline. The Premier tried to allege that all these retail sales declining are based on mortgages. I mean, come on. The, the GDP's been going down. I, it, it's a false equivalency. We need to grow our economy. Where we can come up with... That's, that's a very easy way to stimulate it. Our economy's been in a nosedive since 2010 when we lost 6,000 people. That's a huge domestic consumer base, paying rent, groceries, taxis, 
retail, et cetera, et cetera. Higher taxes in Bermuda, he says, will become the norm for the foreseeable future thanks to past government spending. We're, we're in the position where more taxes are also going to be needed. That's the unfortunate thing. If this huge debt hadn't been created, there would be a much, much more freedom as a, as a government to do whatever ideological things someone wants to do. But the, the stark reality is we've got a declining economy. There's been no stimuli in the, in the last uh, year and a half. The OBA projects that were started before the election, the airport, the St. Regis, are eventually all going to finish. Those jobs are going to need an outlet to go somewhere without putting new energy into the economy. You know, what are we going to be left with? A very creative taxation system that costs a lot of money to collect? Senator Kemp agrees the existing tax structure unfairly focuses too much on goods and labor. Elsewhere, Senator Kemp acknowledging the caution by the PLP over immigration due to national sensitivities. But he notes it won't be without a price. Fine, we can be careful all we want and we can shift the tax burden all we want. But, but the, just this afternoon, yet another month of retail sales went down 4%. Motor vehicles went down 30%. The Premier can say that we're being negative, but at the end of the day, this is what, six straight months of retail decline? GDP's down on like 2015, so pre-America's Cup? Tarai Trot reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Tarai Trot speaking there with opposition Senator Nick Kemp. And the Minister of Health, Kim Wilson, recently informed the House of Assembly about steps being taken on reports on abuse with aging disability services and care homes. Mike Sharp has the details. The minister said inspection at seniors' facilities have begun and that a new officer will join the team soon to address complaints of abuse. Over called last year, we announced the code of practice for um, implementation of all residential um, facilities. And the first round of uh, inspections has been completed by Aging and Disability Services just to ensure that care homes are applying the appropriate standards. In addition to that, uh, in uh, January, we will be retaining the services of an education officer within the ministry. And their sole responsibility also will be to ensure that the um, standards are being implemented fully by the uh, facilities and if the facilities need any types of uh, assistance and so far as understanding the standards and recognizing what their legal obligations are, then that person will fulfill that role. Uh, we did indicate that there were some statistics. Uh, we have approximately, we received three complaints per month with respect to uh, seniors abuse. Those are investigated and if there is need to, then obviously the matter is referred to the police and then the police conduct their investigation and or uh, a file is completed and sent to the director of public prosecutions. Uh, I raise this because in recent weeks we've seen some reports in the media with respect to uh, certain care facilities and um, allegations of abuse being uh, conducted by the persons that work within those facilities and aging and disability services were in, with along with the family members were intimately involved in that and um, acted very quickly to address the issue, report it to the police for the police to investigate, hence the uh, prosecutions were commenced. The Shadow Minister of Health, Patricia Gordon Pamplin, says she supports government's new steps on inspecting seniors' facilities. Well, obviously, we are we hold hands with the government in wanting to stamp out the incidence of uh, seniors' abuse. Um, and I think my questions to the minister was effectively when she talked about um, a new regime that they are putting in place with respect to nursing homes. I wanted to make sure that inspections were up to date and that any incidents that uh, they had been aware of had actually been brought to the uh, necessary authorities. And she has indicated to me that. There were nine cases that were actually either with the DPP or in varying stages uh, in respect of trying to stamp out elder abuse. I think that that's critically important uh, because our concern for our seniors and if there's poor treatment for them, it's, it's tremendously egregious for the community. And I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Mike. And now let's head over to AccuWeather for the latest.
AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast on ZBM is brought to us by the folks at the BFNM Insurance Group. We have a pretty active weather pattern here this evening. There's been some thunder and lightning to the north, to the south, and some of this is occasionally clipping on uh, awfully close to the island and impacting some of us. Uh, so some thunderstorms are in the area. Uh, you can see this large cluster of clouds right overhead. There's an area of low pressure to the south and west, and the uh, lights are going out because of sunset, not because the clouds are going anywhere away. So you can see the extra showers in the area. It's been a wet time, uh, and uh, we will hold on to the showers for the evening. A thunderstorm advisory is in effect. Temperatures 73 degrees across the island. Uh, we've been pretty steady for several hours. We did make it into the upper 70s earlier today, but we have since fallen with the rain in the neighborhood. Humidity pretty steady at 91 percent. Wind south at 10 to 15 knots. Water temps at 74 right now. On the inside, we have one to two foot waves, but the concern is mainly on the outside. Those three to five footers plus the lightning threat. Not the best night to be out there on the boat, obviously. So a thunderstorm advisory continues this evening. There is also a small craft warning this evening as well. We expect to see something a little tamer, a little quieter tomorrow. But again, small craft warning this evening. Uh, high tide uh, 625. The tide is going to be going back out then until 1226 a.m. Another high tide at early morning hours tomorrow at 656 a.m. And then low tide at 116 in your early early Wednesday afternoon. Uh, but boaters beware. It is a little bit tumultuous out there with thunder and lightning nearby, some showers, and uh, a lot of the most active weather will be in the next few hours. And then later tonight, things will get a little quieter. Leftover showers linger late tonight. There could be a leftover passing shower in a few spots in the morning. And then we'll just hold on to some clouds and temperatures will be back up to around 76 in the afternoon. Here's Futurecast this evening. Again, you're right in the middle of things here with these showers and thunderstorms nearby. Uh, this disturbance will continue to push northeast, but there is another front waiting to push in. Uh, this one doesn't have as much moisture with it, so the main event pushes away to the east. And on Wednesday evening, it'll be a little quieter out there with less wind, at least for a time. Looking at the current conditions down into the Caribbean, Jamaica, 90 degrees, pretty warm there and bright, not a bad time. Into Barbados, we have showers, Trinidad and Tobago scattered showers out there, and there are no tropical threats at this point. And we're counting down the days to the official end of hurricane season. That is November 30th. Into eastern North America, we have been downright cold and snowy early in the year, early in the season, I should say, uh, for uh, many folks into New York and Boston. We're going to see another round of snow showers. A couple of rain showers, snow showers mixed into New York and Boston. Temperatures well below average in these areas. Toronto, a better chance for actual snow there. Uh, Atlanta, around 58 degrees. Miami showers. And then across the pond into London, 45. Running a little cool there as well. Uh, in uh, the five-day forecast, we do bring showers back to the forecast on Thursday. Friday and Saturday look downright cool and breezy. Get ready for that. Behind this next front, we'll really have a cool down with a pretty good breeze. The coolest weather so far this season. And then Sunday will get milder and wetter as well. Back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. My name is Kevin Roberts. I'm a taxi driver slash ambassador. My father's with VFNM, so am I. My, half of my family always been seen to be with for me to find them. I tried a different provider at one time, but I wasn't too happy with the competition because back then it took too long to settle claims. They questioned every claim, and I never really had that problem with VFNM. I'm quite happy with it. Win a trip or two to the 2019 Trinidad Carnival. When you purchase a car from Bermuda Motors, your name will be entered into a draw for a chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip for two, including flights, accommodation, and tickets to the Trinidad Carnival. Visit Bermuda Motors on Church Street or bermudamotors.bm. Christmas in Bermuda is a special time for most of us. Unfortunately, for some families in Bermuda, there's no warm Christmas. This year, many families will be in need. It's the 30th anniversary of the Lions Clubs of Bermuda and the Marketplace helping share the Christmas spirit, so let's help take care of each other. Shop at any Marketplace, Shopping Center, Modern Mart, or A1 stores and purchase extra tins of non-perishable items. 
Once you have purchased these items, place your food donation into Santa's bin located at the front of the store. The Lions Clubs will collect your food contributions and assemble them into hampers to be delivered to the families in need around the island. Christmas comes once a year. Help make it a special time for every family in Bermuda. Sponsored in part by the Bermuda Broadcasting Company. Share the Christmas spirit. I'm Tony Waterman coming up on The Breakdown this week. Hot, hot, hot. We dive head first into insurance-linked securities. Billions of dollars are being raised, and Bermuda is at the center of it all. Plus, ignition. the race for space has gone commercial. We'll take a look at the role Bermuda can play in the $400 billion industry. That's Thursday at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. Thanks for staying with us. Today, the United Nations celebrates International Children's Day, designated as a day for bringing awareness at improving children's welfare. Well, here in Bermuda, there's, there's been a 125% increase in reports of child sexual abuse to the Department of Pro Public Prosecutions, as Child Protection Charity SCARS marks over 8,000 adults trained in abuse prevention. There were 10 cases of child sexual abuse reported to police in 2014. That number rose to 26 in 2017, representing a 125 percent increase, according to the Department of Public Prosecutions. They attribute these figures to the work of SCARS, which has successfully trained 15 percent of the adult population in abuse prevention skills. Many people have said, especially in historical cases, that the SCARS training was the impetus for, for reporting the, child, the, the case and the crime. And so um, I, I think if you speak to anybody um, in that field, they will say that reporting is up. Um, and, and that's a great thing because what we're doing is empowering our people um, to, to talk about it. And it's not only about revenge or retribution. This is about protecting children. Bermuda is the first country in the world to reach this milestone. Children have a right to grow up loved and protected, and nothing should get in the way of that. Um, and so um, when children are sexually abused, you know, they're, they're scarred. That's just a fact. Um, when you talk, if you speak to anybody who's a survivor of sexual abuse, um, there is a spillover from it. And so to have 8,045 adults educated in prevention um, is just great for our country. They want to ensure every adult on the island is SCAR certified and to make training mandatory across child-focused organizations. We want them to put policies in place, not only a code of conduct, but a social media policy, um, a transportation policy, a travel policy. What is expected when adults travel with children? What is expected when travel, when parent, when adults, um, you know, provide transportation for children? Um, what is expected when adults and uh, you know, have social media, you know, we need to have social media policies, policies. All of that will protect children and reduce risk in organizations. While Ms. Ray Rivers understands reporting abuse is difficult, however, coming forward to report incidents can begin the healing process for victims. Sexually abusing children is a crime, and so we have to report. We, you know, it's not an easy thing. Trust me, I've had to do it. Um, and like they say in our training, doing the right thing is not doing the easy thing. But reporting is very important because it shows children that adults believe them, care about them, will do anything to protect them, and show them also that there is consequence when we break rules um, and, uh, and when we commit crimes. And sexually abusing children is a crime. It's against the law. SCARS is a small but powerful organization, which the figures suggest are changing the culture of silence in Bermuda. It was recently recognized internationally for its work. Once we trained 5% of the population, we received an award uh, called the Tipping Point Award from the, one of the leading sexual abuse prevention organizations in the U.S. And, um, and we are the first country in the world to have hit tipping point. And that was when we were at 5% and we're now at 15%. So I think, you know, Bermuda can send a clear message to other countries that it can be done. Firefighters responded to a car fire around 5 this evening on Middle Road in the Paget area between Mance Road and Cobbs Hill Road. The police media manager, Dwayne Kane, says traffic diversions had to be put in place and delays were expected. Bernie's reports, police were on scene and traffic flow was reduced to one lane traffic. 
Fire Service spokesperson Lieutenant Rosanne Francis stated that on arrival, the officer in charge reported there were two persons who fortunately made their way out of the burning vehicle without injury. He adds two members of the team of four personnel wore breathing apparatus and quickly extinguished that fire. Still to come, a former Olympian talks post-competition life with Mike Sharp right after this short break in just a few minutes. Join us for the annual Christmas Parade Sunday, November 25th at 5 p.m. in Hamilton. Bring the whole family to get into the Christmas spirit. There will be free goodies for the kids and great entertainment for all. Experience new dazzling lights and floats as Santa makes his way along the parade route. Kick off the holiday season Sunday, November 25th at 5 p.m. with the Marketplace 2018 Christmas Parade. Bermuda Broadcasting Company and lead sponsor HSBC is pleased to present the annual Christmas Boat Parade 2018. Join me, Keeble the Captain Burgess. And me, co-host Diane Carlson, live from the flagpole on Front Street as we bring you the latest on the decorated Christmas boats in this year's competition on Ocean 89 starting at 6.30 p.m. We'll have special guests joining us for interviews during the event. This live coverage of the Christmas Boat Parade on Ocean 89 is December 8th. This special presentation has been brought to you by lead sponsor HSBC. Real Sports Talk Bermuda, hosted by Earl Baisden, will present a live one-hour special in-depth analysis on the island's culture and sport. What must be done for improvements, attitudes in sports, success with our former athletes representing the country internationally and sports administration. Guests include former athletes, influential persons within the sporting community, and the athletes of today. Join us for this special two-part series beginning Tuesday, November 27th at 8 p.m. on ZFB TV 7 and again Tuesday, December 4th on ZFB TV 7 at 8 p.m. That's Real Sports Talk from Utah, hosted by Earl Basin, which is brought to you by the Department of Youth Sports and Recreation. I'm Tony Waterman coming up on The Breakdown this week. Hot, hot, hot. We dive headfirst into insurance-linked securities. Billions of dollars are being raised, and Bermuda is at the center of it all. Plus, ignition. the race for space has gone commercial. We'll take a look at the role Bermuda can play in the $400 billion industry. That's Thursday at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. The first black female Olympic diver in the world, Katora Horton Parentchief, is enjoying her days now as an administrator. Mike Sharp has the story. Horton Parentchief competed at the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens. And now she is the Bermuda Olympic Association's chairman of the Olympic Standards Committee. Ms. Horton Parent, she first speaks about the responsibility for dissemination of funds for our elite athletes. Pretty awesome because they do report to us. It's part of their uh, give back to the association. We have to account to the government for where it is that we're spending the money. And all of that is performance-based funding. So if you do well, you're, a little, you're eligible for a little more funding. Yeah. Do we have a lot of elite athletes? Not a ton. We have, um, so for the BOA, there are A elite athletes, B elite athletes, and C elite athletes. So we have uh, quite a few Cs who are up and comers. A lot of them are juniors who have been to the Youth Olympic Games, um, CAC Games people. Um, other than that, we've got the Bs who are well on their way to being Olympians. Then we've got the As who are Olympians and, uh, and beyond. And how does the funding go for these three categories? A's, if I can start there, they actually get a stipend, plus they get uh, six of their international meets fully paid for. Oh. Um, and then the B's will get six meets paid for, but they do not have the stipend. And the C's get three meets paid for. Bermudian athletes did fairly well at the CAC Games in Colombia. And next, it's the 18th Pan Am Games in Lima, Peru. Pan Am qualifying is in full effect right now, so that's super exciting. We did quite well at CACs, so we are looking for some good performances at Pan Am Games out of the, the athletes that went to CACs especially. Maybe early, but qualifiers for Pan Am? Yeah, we've got a few. Oh, we've yeah? Got a few. <laughs> so it's good. Um, but we're looking forward to a, a bunch more. So um, What's a few? 
and who? What sports? I'm not telling you all that. But no, um, bowling was a uh, female bowlers actually were a surprise. And you will know that the male bowlers got some medals at the CAC game. So that was great. But the female bowlers have come out hidden. So it's great. Um, we've got a cyclist and some squash. Oh, no track, no swimming? Too early, I guess. Not yet. They will, though. You anticipate maybe a team of 15, 20 or more? No, absolutely not. Smaller? So, yeah, it should be smaller than that. Um, we only took a team of eight to Commonwealth Games. Uh, Pan Ams is the step underneath the Olympic Games. So it's, uh, it's between CAC Games and the Olympics. So we're hoping to get people from CAC Games to qualify for Pan Ams. But yeah. Katura, as our first and only female Olympic diver, how are you finding your experiences as chairman of uh, Olympic Standards Committee? And I think you've been doing some chef de mission work, doing some traveling as well. Yeah, no, it's, it's been amazing being on this side of the, the table. It's, it's a lot more involved than I ever would have known as an, as an athlete. So I'm liking it. And it's good to be able to give back to athletes. And I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. And that's our program for this evening. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and we hope to see you again tomorrow at the same time. Thanks for watching. Good night. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company.